Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Salma. Uh, this is Teagall 3D. Today's episode, we are going to combine 3D printing, comic books, and beer. I'm uh, going to talk about using Simplify 3D to embed a nut into a print to make a working, functional tap handle. Backstory, in my area, a new brewery called Heroic Ale Works has opened. The owners, the management behind this brewery, do not just consider themselves brewers, but nerds. And so every beer in their line is named after a fully realized hero or supervillain. In fact, when you go and partake and do a tasting, you get a collector's card that describes the beer as well as the villain that, or the superhero, the character that it's based on. Their tasting room celebrates all types of geekness and nerdness. Uh, you see, I saw a Starship Enterprise model there. The walls are surrounded with fan art. Uh, the, the bar itself is just uh, lined, covered with comic books. Um, let's see, the men's restroom is painted like a TARDIS. And so all types of geekdom and nerddom are represented in their tasting room including 3D printing. They contacted me, I believe, on a Tuesday, and we had tap handles for a tasting event that they wanted by Friday. I think this is a really good story for 3D printing because you see a lot of um, marketing out there. You see a lot of buzzwords out there on websites where they're talking about rapid prototyping, rapid product development, and this is what that is. To make the tap handles functional, we went ahead and embedded a standard 3 8 inch um, nut inside the print itself, and this will screw on to the hardware of the keg, and you can pull on it and pour beer. So my job, for the most part, was pretty easy. They actually sent me a sketch of what they wanted and included measurements, exact measurements, so I didn't have any hard decision making to make. Really, the only unusual thing to this model is the hole for the nut. And here, this is a great case where we can discuss the orientation of your print and thinking ahead on how it's going to be laid out on the printer, how it's going to affect printing, and that will impa impact your design. If I printed it up right, uh, then it's my slicer, my Simplify 3D, was saying it was gonna take four and a half hours. Ugh. If I laid it flat on the bed, then then it was gonna take um, just one hour and 15 minutes. So the other thing with my orientation of the printing, in their specifications, they wanted their um, text to be out one eighth of an inch. And if I did have my model upright, those overhangs were not really gonna cut it on my maker gear. Uh, even with the 0.75 millimeter nozzle, I would have needed supports, which we didn't wanna really deal with. But it, so again, printing flat. That was the way to go. It was going to be faster and it was going to be good for my uh, detailing, my text. Here we go. Knowing how I'm going to orient to the print, now I come in and I want to put a hole in place for the nut. And, you know, if it was upright, I would just be putting in a little, slightly bigger hexagon for my nut to fit in because it's down flat. I can't do that. Because think about the process. Think about when it's printing, right? There's gonna be a point in time where I need to pause that print and stick the nut in. If my nut was exactly a, a, just a slightly bigger hexagon, those, that opening is gonna close up. And my nut itself is gonna be wider than that opening and it wouldn't fit in. So what I had to do was make sure that uh, that opening extended up the, the width of the nut so it could go ahead and fit in. And then you may note that my hole for the bolt isn't just a straight cylinder. I went with an octagon. And the reason I did that is 360 divided by eight is 45. And what that means is the angles that my printer is gonna be dealing with as it's making those overhangs of my, my hole is 45 degrees, which is well within my printer's capabilities for overhangs. I use multiple processes and Simplify 3D, of course, that's kind of my thing. So let's talk about this. Um, my printing process, I started off in red and I printed a fair amount of time and paused, strategically put the nut in like this, uh, resumed the print, it sealed the nut into place. And then at one point I did do a color switch. So near the end of the print, I had the print pause again so I can switch my filaments and do that last part. 
So you would think that I would have just one, two, three processes because I had two places that I was stopping. That's not the case. I actually have four processes. I run the first two together. And here's why. Uh, this is a large print. Uh, we were on a crunch time. I also was on a crunch time with my material, making sure I had enough red to make this event, to make the enough tampa, tampa handles before the event. <laughs> if I was just doing one process to where I inserted the nut, um, it was going to do my top solid layers. And I didn't really want to waste the time or the material on those extra layers. Well, why not turn top layers off altogether, you may ask? because I had some top layers that I did want solid. And the, that would be the placeholder where my nut was gonna be. I didn't want my nut resting on infill. I wanted my nut resting on solid, solid material so I had enough support because this is gonna be something that's pulled on and have pressure on it. What I ended up doing was setting up the bottom of my print into two separate processes that I ran together. My first process, I went ahead and set up with three top layers like a normal print that I would do. Uh, the second process, I went ahead and set up to zero top layers. And of course, when I start that next process, the first thing it's going to do is solid bottom layers. So then I have that nice uh, solid layer there instead of infill on top of it. After that, I run to 16.75 millimeters and then the uh, nozzle will lift up again. Um, and this time I switch over to blue and then I restart the print to do the detailing. All right. I'm going to talk about a little bit of my custom starting ending scripts. Uh, I don't think you're going to see anything really spectacularly new here. I'm doing the same thing that I'm doing when I insert mirrors. Uh, same thing that I did with the gyro cubes with the different colors when I was inserting them. Um, basically, um, my when it, right before I'm inserting the nut, after I finish those first two processes, all I do is go into um, relative mode and I have the nozzle lift up 100 millimeters. Just so I could come in, doot, 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 jump my nut in, and be good to go. Then in the startup script of my subsequent processes, all I have to do is set it to absolute mode. Now there is one deviation. My final process where I'm switching from the red to blue, I do add in a purge extruder to the startup script, and that's just to make sure I have a good flow after my color change. And what I'm doing here is achievable. <laughs> It can be done by other people. It's, I'm not special over here, I'm not magic, and this project is living proof. I did the first 11 tap handles for this brewery, and then another maker took over, and they've done 20 with the nuts inside and the color changes, so you can do it too. Uh, in fact, uh, the footage that you're seeing of the actual tap handles pouring, pouring beer, that's, that was the other printer, that's not me. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you want to know more about Heroic Ale Works, uh, you can go to their website. It's heroicaleworks.com. I'll put the link down below. If you have any questions or comments or need help uh, tweaking G-Code, uh, let me know. I'm at TJW on Twitter. You can comment down below here on YouTube. And I'm at www.tjw.com for my 3D printing blog. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day.